There have been over 16 enhancements to graphing in Jump 16. I would like to showcase five of them. Let's start with dynamically formatting an access label such as date and time. In this data table, we've got solar power that's been generated over a number of months. And you can imagine solar power has a certain pattern, power generation, because it's generated during the day, but not so much at nighttime. Right now, the daytime axis here is showing the month and year. But if I zoom in on my data, as I zoom in, and if I get close enough, I can now see the day of the month has been added continue to zoom in, you can now see the pattern of daytime and nighttime is showing up in my data in Zoom. And if I zoom in far enough, eventually I'll be able to see the time of day is showing up on the axis. So this is really nice. This axis is actually automatically formatting to show the amount of information that logically fits. It used to be that that format of an axis was set by the column property for the date time column, and it wouldn't change. It was just whatever you had set for that column property. So now this axis will dynamically adjust and show the most relevant information based on the level of zoom that you have. Showing another feature, and I really like this one a lot. And what I'm showing here is I have a data table that shows a count of failures that's occurring. And the only thing I'm plotting on this graph or chart is the count on the Y axis. I'm not showing anything on the X axis. And it used to be that when you fit a line to this data, the line would show the average value. So in this case, I got the average count of failures across the entire file. And now there's a checkbox available in jump 16 call row order. And when I check that box, it converts this graph into a little line graph. And what it's using is the row numbers as the X axis setting. And to make this more interesting, let's say I have a got a number of pr different processes that I'm looking at. So I can overlay my process here. So now I got my process B showing up in red and my process A showing up as the blue line. I can view how the performance of those are doing over time. Make this even more interesting. This is counting the number of failures that are occurring in two processes. And I have the cause for the failures available also in this data table. So now I can see for the different causes of failures that the two processes are pretty comparable except for the contamination cause. I have a new statistic for cumulative sum. This is using the exact same data. So we have the count of failures by the cause and we always have had a number of different summary statistics available for these charts. So I can go up to this drop down menu and I can pick a number of different statistics. And what this is doing is it's actually accumulating the sum across the chart. So for this failure mechanism, we have a number of failures. And then the JSON chart takes the sum and adds it to the new ones for this column. And you can see the difference between adjacent columns is the contribution of this particular failure mechanism this even more interesting, I can right click and I can order this by the count. And when I do this, the count is actually the frequency of the different failure mechanisms. So now I can see that my dropping failures are the least frequently occurring and contaminations are the most frequently are occurring. And you can see the difference between the two bars is showing how much each category is contributing and make this a little bit more interesting. I could take my process and now I can overlay by the process. And I can see a comparison now between my two processes and those failures are accumulating. And you can see that the process A is actually a little bit better. All the way up through all these different failure mechanisms except for contamination 
then it's significantly worse than process B. So you might say that if I could fix this contamination problem in my process, say that it, it might actually be the preferable process to use if I want to have a minimum count of failures. My favorite tools now is the ruler tool. And just as you can imagine, if I click on this, and I'm using this tool right now, let's just say I've got a bimodal distribution showing up here in my chart. And I want to know the difference from peak to peak on this chart. So I can just click on one peak and I can drag across. And as you can see, the difference between the peaks is about 512. I also can do this with a scatter plot. I want to know approximately how wide this cluster of points is. So I can drag diagonally across the cluster. And I can see that I know the different distances about 44. Let's say I want to know the distance between a couple points of interest. I can do that and use this tool to measure any manner of distances. Perhaps I have a couple density points. I want to know the difference between them. I can drag across that and in our scatter plot matrix, this works. Here I'm looking at the rate of reaction by a couple of different reactors and we can see the averages of the rate of reaction for the two different reactors. And I can easily measure what the difference is between my two reactors. So about 500 or so. And this also works in our prediction profiler by selecting a different reactor. So I can get that same value that is measured here in my prediction profiler by just dragging this box here. And so you can visually see those distances on the screen. But there's a bonus. These values are showing up in the log window. So if I go back and look at my log, you can see these values here are also being documented to the log. So if we were required to have a written record of these values, we could do that by saving this log and get a record of those values just by saving to my clipboard or as a script and pulling that data out as a text file. Jump has improved our box plots. And so here I've got a case where I've got the rate of reaction that I'm measuring. And I've got two different calibration teams that are working on the process. I have an internal team and a contractor team that occasionally does our calibration. And you can see that there's a difference between the performance of this rate of reaction depending on who's calibrating the equipment. So perhaps I want to know how often the different teams are used to calibrate the equipment. And now we have a new way of scaling these box plots based on the frequency of the data that's showing up. I can do that by right clicking. And there's an option now for size by. I'm going to size this by the count. So the count is basically the frequency of how often these teams were used to calibrate the equipment. And now I can see clearly visually that my internal team is doing the majority of the calibrations. And you can see by the relative width of these box plots how often the calibration team is used in relation to the contractor team. You might also notice that there are the median values are showing up with these horizontal lines in the middle of the boxes. And you may want to know if there's a statistically significant difference. And now we have the ability to add notches to our box plots. If we go to the red triangle menu, add a notch, you can now see how the notches give you the information about the confidence interval of that medium. And you can say because these confidence intervals are not overlapping, you can conclude that it's not a statistically significant difference for the medians. And I can also add the dot to the mean diamonds. And if you're familiar with this, the points of the diamond reflect the mean value. And then the upper and lower limits are the confidence bands around these mean values. And you can see that these diamonds do overlap a little. So you might conclude that the mean is not statistically significant, but the median value is.
I hope you investigate the further enhancements made in Jump 16 for graphene. Visit jump.com slash new.